Hey, 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 Charisma here. Welcome back to Charisma Daily. A Las Vegas woman is accused of doing awful things to her dog. A Las Vegas woman was arrested and charged with two alleged crimes on May 21st after an extensive investigation into her electronics. 30-year-old Brenda Montgomery allegedly had over 150 videos of her and her dog on her phone. Authorities said Nevada detectives also said that Nevada was a, that Montgomery was a member of a telegram group that shared illegal content. Law and Crimes Elizabeth Milner breaks down what investigators have, has uncovered so far. Let's take a listen. One of those things that I, I understand that there, the level of depravity really kind of gets under your skin. A disturbing case out of Las Vegas, Nevada. A lot of times you see these kinds of crimes are associated with individuals who are in their teenage years, typically boys. You, you, when you, you certainly don't think of a grown adult woman actively engaging in something like this. A 30-year-old woman is locked up accused of horrendous crimes, possessing lewd images of children, as well as performing and recording sexual acts between herself and her dog. On May 21st, Las Vegas Metro Police arrested Brenna Montgomery on charges including multiple felony counts of preparing, advertising, or distributing material depicting child pornography, two felony counts of possession of visual pornography of a person under the age of 16, and gross misdemeanor of bestiality. Mm. Although Montgomery was arrested in May of this year, the investigation began three years ago in 2021 when police received a cyber tip report from the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children. The tip wow. regarded a Snapchat user who was transmitting three files of material involving children. It's one of those things that I, I understand that the level of depravity really kind of gets under your skin. Mm. These kinds of things happen a lot. They happen all of the time. And I think it's important that we have appropriate and developmentally healthy conversations about sexual acts, about what sex means, about what sex behaviors should be and should not be, and understanding the role in which we all play in making sure that we keep ourselves and our uh, society safe. And the investigation would seemingly lead to Montgomery as more hmm. sickening details would emerge. According to a report by KLAS, police would find more than 150 videos, which appear to show Montgomery and her dog. Police oh, reported. This woman is sick, sick, demented, demonic, and it is a degenerate. That you had to abuse an innocent living being for your own fetishes and your own demonic activities is just sickening and disgusting. This dog will be traumatized for the rest of his life. And I find that women or people in general, whether it's a woman or a man who engage in this type of activity, this depravity, it leads to other depravity acti deprived activities. In, like they were saying, now she do, she's linked with to distributing child pornography and then bestiality. And when they get into this, this realm of degeneracy, it's, it never stops. It just continues. It's like they need to feel this salacious appetite for, for satanic uh, stuff. And it's just sad because animals are being abused and children are being abused and it's not right. Let's continue noted that five of the videos showed Montgomery's face or her partial face. Some videos showed Montgomery using peanut butter and some of the videos <gasps> were duplicates. Uh, shocking, wow. right? Grossed out. I mean, when you, when you think about these kinds of crimes, particularly the bestiality aspect mm. of it, you're usually thinking about someone who is still somewhat immature, right? A lot of times you see these kinds of crimes are associated with individuals who are in their teenage years, typically boys. You, you, when you, you certainly don't think of a grown adult woman hmm. actively engaging in something like this. This, this, is, this is something that is extremely unusual. Forensic psychologist, Dr. John Delatorre explained. 
Well, I don't agree so much because I've covered other stories with grown ass women who have been involved in bestiality. So I don't think it's just limited to teenagers or teenage boys. A lot of women, grown women, are involved with this. They abuse their animals. They abuse their dogs. Let me be specific. They abuse their dogs. They have sex with their dogs. And then they film it and distribute it on, on different websites and on the internet. Because there is a market. There's a deep, dark, sinister marketplace for this kind of content. So they get involved and they're making money off of this kind of stuff. And it's very sickening and disheartening, disheartening that we continue to see this level of depravity and degeneracy in society today. He surprisingly comes across cases like this often. Yeah, often, but that's again with juveniles. And usually these individuals kind of grow out of it. As they mature, really? their sexual interests go from, you know, just having the impulse. Essentially, that's what it is, right? The, they, they have an impulse to engage in some kind of sexual activity. And there's no partner there to engage in the activity that, that they want to engage in. And so then they abuse the, the family pet. Right? Is it, that's, that's often how the, the pattern goes. Hmm. I believe that it goes deeper beyond that, that they may start getting engaged, engaging in this type of activities when they're younger, they're teenagers, but they don't grow out of it. They mature into grown women and men, and they continue to this level of, of activity where they are abusing dogs and they're abusing children. They don't grow out of this. No, I don't believe that. I don't agree with that at all. They do not grow, grow out of it. And, you know, they say that there's a link to children who abuse animals when they're younger, that when they grow up, they become psychopathic, psychopaths or psychopaths, and they engage in even more heinous crimes. So they, I don't believe that they grow out of it at all. It's, 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 it's 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 definitely more impulsive that you don't really see with someone who is 30 years old and a woman research such as it is often suggests that when women commit these kinds of acts particularly bestiality there is often an associated uh a child abuse component um so i'm not surprised to hear that not only is there bestiality in, in, in her background but there is also child sexual abuse uh mm. in her background as well that that it's it's again it's it's still so rare to see this but when we do see this it starts from uh the the woman being sexually abused as she was developing and then growing into mm. becoming an abuser because of you know the all of the confusion Cycle. that she would have when it comes to sexuality and what is appropriate sexuality and when are, when are the boundaries that that, that she needs to put up, when are those boundaries actually there and, and when they're pretty pliable. I just want to take a quick pause from this really disturbing story to give a quick thanks to Morgan and Morgan for Morgan has recently received them if you win. Detectives that she did engage in these activities, but added she didn't lock or force the dog to do such activities. As for how she got tied into the other charges, she claimed to come across the lewd images of children in a group on Telegram. Okay, hold up. What? She didn't force the dog. Okay, so the dog instinctively wanted to have sexual intercourse with you, a human. Really? No. You coerced, you enticed, you seduced the dog to engage with you. Obviously, if you're going to put peanut butter, something that the dog likes, all over your body and your private parts, and then you don't think the dog is going to want to lick it off and do what other things? Come on. No, she's even blaming the dog. Like, this is ridiculous. I mean, this is that's is just the sign of the times before you would just get them through the mail. Even before you, in, in way early times, they were legal. So it was okay for people to have some of these images. It's just the sign of the times. It's just the way in which we're communicating now. Before it was snail mail. Now it's electronic mail. Uh, Discord. All the, the, There's always going to be, if someone wants these things, there's always going to be a way for them to obtain it. And I think that's really the issue, which is how do we treat individuals 
who have these proclivities, how do we ensure that the, the, that the behaviors that we all engage in that promote these kinds of behaviors, the society in which we uh, live in, that make it okay for these abuses to occur? How do we stop these things mm -hmm. systemically, I think is probably the thing that we need to look at, but that's, it, it, it's such a large task that any one person can easily exploit someone else and then just post it somewhere and it, it'll easily be found by those searching for it. But would deny saving or downloading any graphic images of minors. This is something that a, a lot of sex offenders say, that they just kind of stumbled across it, that they had sure. no idea what they were doing. The problem is, is that uh, pornography by itself isn't illegal. Right. What makes it illegal is all the other things that are associated with it, like bestiality, like uh, child pornography. So if she's going on Telegram for mm. the specific purpose to engage in uh, the exchange of, of sexual material, then she knows she's trying to hide it. She knows that, exactly. these are, that this is material that she shouldn't have. So this idea that she didn't know that it existed mm. or that, that she was going to be obtaining it. No, no I, I, don't, I don't buy that. According to the arrest report, Montgomery stated she accessed Telegram with her iPhone 12 and the app automatically downloaded the video she viewed on the app and saved to her phone, mm -hmm. but then would later cop to transmitting three lewd videos of children on Snapchat during a role play conversation. Research when it comes to women sexual offenders such as it is often suggests that there is a male co-offender that is, that is kind of the dominant one. It's usually that there's some man in the woman's life that has the these uh, deviant uh, aspects to their sexuality, and they're able to coerce and manipulate the woman into engaging in these kinds of things. Okay, hold up. Here we are again, where modern women can't seem to take responsibility for their own actions. Why does it always need to involve a man that he is the one coercing the woman into doing these things? She's a grown adult, right? God knows how long she's been involved in this type of activity. Yes, she may have been sexually abused as a child, and now she's become the abuser, but still, it is no excuse for doing this. It's no excuse to be involved, to be performing or be involved in bestiality, abusing your dog, and sharing pornography with of children it's absolutely wrong and i know that she knows she knows exactly what she's doing and so far she's blamed everyone except herself she has not taken responsibility for her actions she's blamed her dog uh she's blamed her iphone she's probably going to blame somebody she was role playing for like come on it's need to take responsibilities for your actions you choose to do these things, you need to be accountable and be responsible for the actions and the outcome and the punishment that's going to come and should come along with these with this acts that you've done. Now, that doesn't mean that the woman is not uh, culpable and that doesn't mean that the woman doesn't eventually have her own sexual deviancy. It's that typically these women find themselves in positions in which a being abused and abusing others are a primary component of the relationship that they're in. Nearly two months prior to Montgomery's arrest, she made this post to her Facebook page about finding her dog a better home. Hmm. In the post she wrote, although it saddens me, I realize now it is best for both of us. New beginnings will bring immense joy and success, especially for dearest Piper. Hmm. I'm no longer able to provide her with the care and attention she deserves. Home is where the heart is. Let's help Piper find her sanctuary. If you have any leads or recommendations for trustworthy adoption centers, please let me know. However, it's unclear if it's the same dog from the disturbing videos. And as Dr. Delatory notes, there is a link between Montgomery allegedly victimizing vulnerable victims, children, and animals. They're linked, right? They're linked together oftentimes yep. because of that manipulation, because that the, the individual has authority over them, that the, that the victims in these cases, whether it's an animal or if it's a child, doesn't really have agency. And so they're mm -hmm. able to be uh, in, in, engaged Abused. in these behaviors yeah. against their will because they don't know how to say no. And even exactly. if they did know how to say no, it didn't matter because the the perpetrator of the crime could easily just overwhelm that individual exactly. either through coercion, manipulation, or just, you know, physically. 
like, listen, this, mm. this is the kind of behavior, you know, the recording of these abuses. These are the kinds of things that stick with the victim. Now, of course, there's obviously opportunities for them to be psychologically healthy and that these traumas that they experience isn't going to dominate uh, everything that goes on with them. But the fear that the person that they are interacting with or that a stranger mm -hmm. that they come across in their day to day life has seen them in their most vulnerable moment, has seen them being victimized is a common fear. It's a common refrain that these individuals have that never really go away because once it's out there, it can't be stopped. With Montgomery behind bars for the crimes, a Las Vegas Justice Court judge set her bail at $15,000 with high level electronic monitoring. Mm. I mean, I, I don't know anything about how they, uh, how this particular court decides how their bail should be. I can see individuals, I can see the community being, this is clearly someone who is a risk to society. Definitely. And I don't discount that. I, I think there's also the notion that she's a woman that in terms of recidivism risk, when it comes to sexual uh, offending behavior, it's not very high. So why should it be high? I, get, I can tell about, you know, jail overcrowding, right? I get all of these arguments, but this is, this is once again, another sign of the systemic issues that we have. The system in place is probably the thing that we need to fix rather than focusing on one solitary case in which the bond isn't as high as society would hope that it would be. And that and I think that it is not set high enough. And she is a risk to society. Abusing animals and involving in child pornography, yes, she's definitely a risk to society. And she should be the the penalty and the and the punishment should have been more stiff, should be more strenuous. Okay. She's probably not gonna change her ways and she'll probably be back in the spotlight because these people are deviant at the core, at the soul level. Order comes with stipulations, such as no internet access, no mm. contact with animals, and no contact with minors. But it will remain unclear if jail time will have an effect on Montgomery's alleged behavior. You know, when we look at the uh, risk of recidivism when it comes to women sexual offenders, it's pretty low. It, it goes from either 0% that they're never going to reoffend to somewhere around 7% in 10 years, 20 years, maybe their lifetime. So in terms of, are we looking at someone who is going to re-offend? Maybe, maybe not. It's hard to tell without actually doing a risk assessment on her. The primary thing that I think I would be focusing on is it's not that it was either bestiality or child pornography, child sexual abuse images. It's not that it's just either one of those two. It's that she has a combination of both. Mm. Now, again, these are these are the kinds yep. of things that we would often see in male sexual offenders having multiple sexually deviant behaviors, not as common in women. And so the more of them that you have, the higher the mm. risk for recidivism ends exactly. up becoming. But it's also related to how do they view relationships? Were they sexually abused? Are there ways in which we can diminish those risks of, of recidivism by tackling what exactly it is caused these things to begin? At this time, Brenna Montgomery hasn't posted bond. Online records show she's still locked up in a Clark County jail in Nevada. Again, if she makes her bail, Montgomery was ordered by a judge to have no contact with minors, no internet access, and no contact with animals. She's scheduled to appear in court again on July 17th. Hmm. Reporting for Law and Crime, I'm Elizabeth Milner. It's one of those things that I, I understand that there, the level of depravity. There you have it. A disgusting, really heartbreaking story of this woman who abused her dog and she's involved with child pornography and sexual abuse of children. Uh, distributing materials that contain that type of deviancy. It's really sad. It's not the first time, like I said, that I've covered cases like that. This with women involved, men do it too. But it really, I don't know, it's kind of really different when you see a woman involved in such things because women are supposed to be, or at least instinctly, uh, nurturers and protectors and caregivers of children and, and, and the innocent and the vulnerable. And when you see a woman involved in, sense, in such a depravity, it's really, 
mind boggling and heart wrenching. And I pray that that dog that she abused, sexually abused, has found a good home and that she will never be able to come in contact with children or dogs ever again. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Let me know your thoughts on this story. Have you ever heard anything like this before? And do you what do you think her her time, her punishment should be in jail? Now she goes back to court on July 17th. If there's any update to the story, I'll share it with you. Until next time, take care and bye for now.